We believe that every young person wants to learn and contribute in a significant way to the world around them. We named our initiative Building Intentional Communities because we believe that learning is relational. Her name is Akia. Yeah, and she's next on our list. We have to create a learning environment where kids not only need, know each other's names, but they also know where they come from. Otherwise, the learning environment starts to feel hostile and only the right answer is welcome. We want learning environments that feel creative, where kids can take a risk, can venture an answer, even if they're not sure if it's right or wrong. Building intentional communities is designed to help shift that for young people, to create a space where they become leaders and change makers, where they start to think about what are the core values? What is their character? What is important to them? The Building Intentional Communities model places the process at the center of learning rather than placing the outcome at the center. Um, I think learning um, is hands-on. I think learning is um, experiential. It's getting to see and touch the things that are in the book. Um, it's bigger than just that one experience. It's about in the long term, what am I gonna take away from this and who am I gonna become because of um, my experience with this activity? The thing about building intentional communities model is that learning can be messy. As a classroom coach, I work with instructors to use experiential learning where the youth have to struggle to solve a problem. It may not be as controlled and orderly, but productive struggles create amazing opportunities for learning and growth. I appreciate how, um, like how everybody used great teamwork. And what's most powerful about the experiential activity process is actually the debrief, is the opportunity for people to make real life connections around what is taking place in that activity and how that is both a metaphor and an analogy for the world around them. Who can share how they felt during the activity? How did you feel? It wasn't really unfair to the other people because of purple team. I felt that they were like cheating, I think, but I don't say that they are. I think they kind of were cheating. It can go wrong. It can go totally wrong, but the way that you debrief it and the way that you extract their learning is what's important. It's like, what did you take from not having that success? Why is it important to tell people that you appreciate them and show your thanks? Our curriculum gives staff hundreds of activities to address specific problems, explore values, and teach leadership skills. It can be used very like, like a, a first aid kit, you know, it's like, okay, uh, atmosphere here is sort of down, let's go pull this activity out and get everybody back up to um, how things should be. Um, and I remember one of the activities in the beginning of the year where if you saw someone doing something nice, you would like write it down on a piece of paper and you were trying to fill a jar with those papers towards a goal. And um, I remember they did this activity and then a kid's backpack fell off and a kid put the backpack on the chair and immediately 10 kids went to their paper and like filled it out and dumped it in the jar. So it was really cool. It really goes to show how much they care about one another and how much they um, want to offer gratitude and um, tokens of appreciation. I like our pay it for a jar because it helps us express ourselves. So it's good to see that the students are doing it on their own and they're sharing with their peers. So and that's exciting to see. It's when you know you're doing something good. <laughs> we start off the year by setting up the learning environment. Then we use experiential learning to teach skills and values. As we move to the end of the year, we want to see the youth running the activities themselves, facilitating their own debriefs and planning their own projects. Our culminating events, whether they're painting murals, marching for peace, or holding rallies, are each the result of youth identifying a problem in their communities, researching how to solve them, and then taking action. If they love or under attack, what do we do? Stand up like that. Happening.
happening on the street and we had to do something about it. We need our young people to see themselves as leaders today and then to say, because I'm a leader, I need to build these skills, I need to learn these things because I'm going to use them to make this impact in the world. Us being out there today does create a difference because young people have a voice too. To me, peace is a world with no violence. Peace is a world where people are not judged by their skin color, but by their personality and character. Like me, I have been bullied and called names because of my culture. I have also been pushed around by other kids my age, but I always ignore them. I ignore them because it is my way of showing peace. I hope that other kids and people can respect this message and do what I have done. In the past three years, we have seen example after example of behavior issues going down while leadership skills rise. It's our responsibility to reactivate strategies and tools and skills that allow for young people's imagination and creativity and leadership to soar. That's what the 21st century skills are really all about. We know that young people have a deep intrinsic motivation to learn and grow. Not a baby has been born on the planet that says, I don't want to learn how to walk or uh, getting up, uh, taking my first steps is too hard because I fell down five times. They fall down, they get up, and they do it again. And they're excited every time. And we never hear them say, where's my prize? What do I get for doing that? Do you approve of my steps? They're moving for the joy of moving. What we want in the Building Intentional Communities model is to reconnect our young people to this very natural, intrinsic motivation to learn and grow. We are